welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. It is Lenten season, so the piece of scripture I have for you today comes out of the book of John. Now there's a little bit of background you must understand, and that is that the Jewish nation is living in an occupied state, and Christ has been making waves among the Jewish leadership, and so he has been sent to Pilate, arrested if you will, and Pilate is trying to judge exactly what it is he's done wrong. And a very interesting concept comes up that I think uh, I found enlightening, maybe you will too. It's out of the book of John, John chapter 18, I'll put it right Right here, John chapter 18, 28 says this, Therefore Pilate entered again into the Pithorum and summoned Jesus, and he said to him, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Are you saying this on your own initiative, or did others tell you about me? Pilate then answered, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and your chief priest delivered you to me. What is it you have done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants will be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. Therefore, Pilate said to him, are you a king? Jesus answered and says, you say correctly that I'm a king. For this I've been born, for this I've come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? It's that very last phrase that I want to focus on. What is truth? You know, societally, there are actually two major definitions of truth. One is something that can be measured, something that can be proven. A piece of history, an event that happened, the fact that gravity works, and the other way of looking at truth, a way that the the world is promoting right now, is that if enough people, a culture, if you will, agrees that a thing happened, then it's true for them. And I find this very interesting because that is not what the Bible teaches at all. At no point does the Bible teach your truth is your truth and my truth is mine. The Bible teaches absolute truth. And in a lot of ways, that's very difficult for people to swallow. And that's a little bit of what Pilate's dealing with here. He says, are you a king? And Christ says, no, I, I am, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm a king, but no, I'm not a king like you mean. I'm not a king of this realm. I'm not raising an army. I'm not coming to take over and throw off the Roman rule. I am a king outside of this realm. But people who know me, people who know my truth, that truth is the thing that is going to matter. Now I want you to notice one quick thing, and that is he doesn't deny being a king. He just denies an earthly realm. Now this brings me this idea of what truth is and how we as believers deal with truth. And I'm going to take you to one more parallel passage, John chapter 8, starting at verse 31. I'll put it here. It says, so Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered and said, are are we Abraham's descendants? We've never been enslaved by anyone. How is it you say we will become free? Now check this out. Jesus answered and said, truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Christ is making a very astute observation. No, these people that he's speaking with were never physically enslaved. Yet anyone who commits a sin, that means you and that means me, anyone who's ever committed a sin, you're now a slave to that sin. And a slave is not forever. It's a piece of property, right? Sin owns us. Yet if you are a son, that son remains in the house forever. So the son is the one who's setting us free. That freedom from the bondage of sin. We like to think, or at least historically speaking as Americans anyway, that the truth will make you free, right? That Martin Luther King is the person who says, that first. It was actually Christ here in John chapter 8. Martin Luther King was actually quoting him. What I find absolutely fascinating about this is that freedom is an eternal freedom. Meaning if I sin, I ask for forgiveness. The Christ has come into me. That was the whole point of the cross. Then that sin, I'm no longer in bondage to. Even if I return to it and I mess up again and I sin again, that forgiveness is still there for me. 
eternal forgiveness, not based on what I've done, but what Christ did on the cross. It's the truth that is going to set you free. Well, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. If there's a particular thing you're struggling with, a bit of truth that you're still wrestling with, I would love to engage with you on that level. Hit like, hit subscribe. God bless. I'll see you next week. And that's okay.